was a little girl I always wanted to be a designer but I wasn't very good at drawing and so I kind of put it on a back burner. Years later I went to film school. I got my degree in filmmaking and then I did reportage photography and I was living with my boyfriend who was a photographer and at one point I decided I didn't want to do photography but I didn't know what I wanted to do and he said we were out to dinner and he said why don't you do something obvious and I was like what and he said like fashion and then light bulb I went to school for nine months to Parsons and FIT and then I quit and I thought if I stayed in school any longer I'd lose all desire to be a designer so I just started my own business and basically grew up in public and I had my own brand for 13 years in New York and five years of those 13 years I had a license in Tokyo the department store called Cebu. When I left New York to move to Paris I didn't really have the means to start all over again to set up my own business so I just did whatever I could do. I worked doing costumes for the cinema for a couple films and then uh, I worked on a TV show with Tim Blanks, who was a major um, fashion critic. And then one day, this girl, um, Tiffany Godoy, asked me to write an article, a really long research article, not at all my, what I was interested in doing, about um, the movement in all the major luxury brands between the the power people that move from LVMH to Gucci Group to PPR to and that was my first article and then um, I picked up a video camera and started making little films somebody gave me the name of this woman at L.com and so I met her thinking I could do videos for them. And she said, oh, but would you like to report on um, the shows and also designer profiles? And, and would you like to do a column called Dr. Diane? So you give styling tips. And I did that for like three and a half years. It was all organic, it was not a plan. I, I don't even consider myself a journalist. And she moved from L.com and became the editor-in-chief at VogueParis.com. Then after that, I, or during that, I set up my own blog, which was February 2005. Nobody even knew what a blog was, much less a fashion blog. There were um, political, economic, and food blogs that existed at that time and were pretty popular, but fashion blogs didn't exist. And I started out, uh, there was this girl, a model called Anina. She has a site, anina.net. And she asked me if I would be interested in trying out this software called Life Blogging. This was in 2005. Nobody knew what this was, including the server that I had to use for my mobile. So if we had a problem, because life blogging was, now everybody knows what it is, but then nobody knew what it was. So I would go to a show or go to an event. I had my Nokia phone, so I'd take uh, an image or a video, write a tiny text, push a button, it was immediately on my website and nobody understood it. So the reception, people were kind of, uh, ah, I can't believe it, you know. It's there, you're here, and it's there. Of course, the uh, Chambre Syndicale in Paris, they hate, hate internet, they hate blogs, they, they did everything against it, but now they like it. 
Yeah, I'm not into I'm not into trends at all. Although I see, it's you know, it's easy to see a trend. You go to three fashion shows, you see a trend. But I could care less about trends. What interests me is originality and uh, people with a personal voice, whether it's fashion, music, art, food, whatever. I don't actually define my own style because why would I? But um, it's just my look. I. It, if you want to know like how it started, when I was a designer in the 80s, I found that changing my look all the time was a conflict of interest with creating. So you take designers like Hubert Givenchy or Maison Martin Margiela, they put on a white lab coat, so they're like a blank canvas. So you don't interfere with your own creation. And so I adopted a uniform in black. Then it was a black shirt and black trousers. And like then it changed. Then I stopped designing and I feel good in black. I was just listening to the movie by Yoji Yamamoto, a new documentary with Adidas. And the first thing he says is, I feel comfortable in black. I've worn black all my life. Well, it's brand new. It's still an emerging, uh, it's an emerging market. But what impressed me the most was the first day shows, because I liked going back to your roots, the ponchos, but styled very contemporary. Like you would think it's difficult to wear a poncho on the street because it's not really fashion. But the stylist did a fantastic job. And I liked those black skirts with the little white ruffles which is a tradition, but I didn't know it's a tradition, but it's very contemporary. And then wearing it with like the skinny um, latex trousers or whatever. And I, of course, I know for a long time uh, Octavio Pizarro, but I met him in Paris when he was a designer for Jacques Fat. And what's interesting about what he does is you can feel the roots of Chile but it's on an international level and I think that's the key uh, to getting a success outside of a domestic market is to take from your roots but make it uh, appealing on an international level like years ago what Sofia Kokasalaki did for Greece you know she's one of the few or Mani Sharur for India it's like you take your roots but you interpret it in a way that international market can wear it. That's the key to international success. It's not the key to success because many of these countries don't need an international market. They can do just fine on their domestic market. Like Brazil, you have um, Alexander Herkovich, which makes it an international market, but they don't need an international market any more than an Indian designer does. They have a big enough market of their own, but if you want an international market, that's the secret. I think, you know, it's a, it's a very difficult time right now because you have two things going. <coughs> you have luxury market, and you have High Street with H&M, Mango, uh, Topshop, fast, fast fashion. So in order to succeed, you need to have a voice. But along with that voice, you have to understand cut, which is really important because fast fashion, like H&M, for example, they really know how to make a, ba a pattern. I've even heard that established designers buy things by H&M and copy the pattern because they know how to cut. So a young designer has to know how to cut and they have to understand finishing because it's not enough just to have a concept because why you're going to be much more expensive by the nature of it because you're not cutting by laser and cutting thousands. So you have to really offer something unique but it's got to be well done because if you put it on and the buttons fall off and this falls apart who's going to spend you know 
400, 500 for something they could get for 69 from H&M. That's cut better. That isn't expected to last, you know. Because we're not interested, international market is not interested in seeing a copy because we can get the original. You know, that's why I like what uh, Octavio Pizarro does because you see his interpretation of the poncho, but it's very international. Anybody can wear it. But you feel Chilean roots, they feel like a flair, South American, sensual, exotic. Just go inside yourself and appreciate what it is about your country that makes it different. And then try and transmit that in your designs. But understand cut and fabrication. My major interest is really in developing my fashion film festival and I curate projects because I'm very interested in film and that's uh, you know exploding over the past couple years but I also started a fashion film festival in 2006 which was the first first annual fashion film festival at the same time there is another festival called fashion and film in London I had a film in it but that's biannual and it's all more about um, archival than contemporary I like initiating things and developing them my that's my main project my next edition is uh, October 7th, 8th and 9th in Centre Pompidou and then it travels and I would love, love, love to get some Chilean directors involved. Mm -hmm.